Welcome back. It's important to understand your body and to address any areas that might be causing you problems, but in some cases you may be unaware that you're at risk. And joining us now is Dr. Rafael Cortez. He is a physician at the Borland Groover Clinic, and today we are talking about hepatitis C, and this has been in the news a lot as of recent because I'm sure a lot of people have seen the commercials about hepatitis, about being a cure. Um, let's get into and back it up for a second, talking about what hepatitis C is. What is that condition? Well, hepatitis C is a virus that can infect the liver and produce inflammation. Uh, by producing inflammation, you can develop scarring in, in, the, um, in the liver that may lead to um, uh, liver failure or end-stage liver disease, or cirrhosis, as we call it. Um, when patients are infected with hepatitis C, as the uh, inflammation goes by, they start producing these scars and replacing the normal cells of the liver. Uh, and by doing so, you um, run the risk of uh, losing uh, the functionality of the liver and uh, patients start having problems synthesizing uh, proteins uh, that are vital for um, the function on, uh, day day to day function of the liver and also uh, having issues with um, medication, metabolism of medications or detoxification of chemicals. Yeah, very, very, very important. So let's talk about the symptoms. If somebody uh, might have hepatitis C, what are the symptoms that they should be on the lookout for? Well, most of the patients are actually uh, symptom free. They don't develop any symptoms. About two thirds of the population don't. If you do develop symptoms, the most common one is uh, jaundice or a yellowish discoloration of the skin or the eyes. You can also have um, abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, fevers, chills, um, uh, dark urine, um, itching of the skin, among other symptoms. Okay, and then when, if someone is exhibiting some of those symptoms, how then do you diagnose if they come in to see you that they have hepatitis? Well, what C. we do is we, we do a, a blood test that can test for antibodies against hepatitis C in the body and the bloodstream, and then we confirm that with another specialized test that looks for the virus inside of the body. Um, not everybody that has a positive antibody for hepatitis C does have um, hepatitis C, so we need to confirm that with this specialized test. So how is it then transmitted? How is, are people getting hepatitis C to begin with? Well, anything that's uh, blood to blood contact uh, with an infected source would give you uh, hepatitis, or you will run the risk of developing hepatitis C. The, co the most common uh, uh, route of infection by far is uh, IV drug use. Um, other risk factors inv involve uh, uh, body piercing, tattoo, sexual intercourse, although that's very low, less than 5%. Uh, you can also have uh, an infected mother pass it to the offspring, uh, although it's at very low risk, also less than 5%. Um, having any blood transfusions before uh, 1992 or any liver transplants before, or any organ transplant before 1992, uh, sharing razors or toothbrushes with uh, infected uh, people may give, it, uh, may give you the, uh, the risk also to develop hepatitis so, C. So uh, then um, who then should be tested? I mean, you gave a good example if you had a uh, liver transplant or you had an organ transplant before a certain year. I mean, obviously come in and get tested. Is there anyone else that should be thinking? I mean, I guess they fall into the category of what you just described. Yeah, yes, I, anybody that, um, you know, actually, uh, that's a really good question because mo most people don't develop symptoms, like I said before. Yeah. So it's, um, we under, we uh, tend to underdiagnose patients with hepatitis C. Uh, so it's very important to be aggressive asking questions when you, when you talk to uh, uh, people that might be at risk. Actually, the uh, um, CDC developed some uh, guidelines uh, to help us with that. Um, as 50% or more of the patients uh, are unaware that they have the diagnosis. Uh, basically screen anybody that's at risk like we previously said and in 2012 they added a new recommendation for those guidelines in which they included anybody who's born in the United States between the years of 1945 and 1965 to be screened against hepatitis C, the so-called uh, baby boomers. Mm -hmm. So specifically the guidelines uh, asked to uh, screen against the baby boomers, anybody who's ever injected any uh, illegal drugs, anybody who has ever had any blood transfusions or uh, bl uh, liver transplant or any other transplant before 1992. Anybody Come in and just make sure that you're getting tested to make sure because it is so contagious Correct. Uh, that you need to make sure that you know if you Elevated have Elevated liver enzymes also is a very common uh, indication to test against or if you have had um, uh, HIV which the risk factors are similar to um, hepatitis C. Good thing to test for. Okay, so let's talk about the treatment because we've seen the commercials talking about a cure for hepatitis C. How do you treat it? Is it now curable? 
Yes, actually, uh, these are very exciting times for the treatment of hepatitis C. We have a lot of new weapons in our armamentarium to treat hepatitis C. Uh, conventionally, in the 1990s, when we started treating the, uh, uh, the, the virus, we used an injectable medication that was either injected daily, three times a week, or once a week in conjunction with another oral medication that was given daily. Uh, and let me tell you, it was not a walk in the park. Patients had a lot of side effects, a lot of adverse events related to it, including like flu-like symptoms, uh, headaches, uh, visual problems, thyroid uh, imbalances, liver toxicity, or so um, you could have uh, decreased blood counts, often requiring blood transfusions. And the therapy was for a year or sometimes more. You know, um, um, this was delivered on the gold standard for over 10 years. Wow, and now what is the treatment? Is it a shot, is it a pill? What, what well, do you? What do you need? Now, now we have uh, newer medications, like I said before, uh, which uh, allow us for shorter intervals of therapy, uh, the avoidance of injections, because most of them are oral, um, also uh, higher success rates and less uh, side effects and better tolerability of the uh, drug. Wow, so awareness is key. Come in if you think that you might have this condition, get tested for it, and there is now hope with the, uh, the possibility of a cure. Yes, definitely. Actually, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, success rates are uh, higher than 90%. Um, what we uh, uh, look for is a sustained biological, biological response, which is uh, basically not having any detectable virus 12 to uh, 24 weeks after cessation of therapy, and we consider those patients cured. Wow. Dr. Cortez, thank you so much for coming You're in. Welcome. We certainly thank do you. appreciate you, sir. And we'd like to thank the Borland